Madden's franchise mode has always been a notoriously frustrating experience, especially if you're aiming to keep your save as realistic as possible. Franchise quarterbacks always end up in free agency, trade packages rarely reflect real life trades, and EA still haven't managed to figure out a true distinction between edge rushers and outside linebackers. And while some of this is ultimately out of our control, fortunately there are certain settings you can adjust to keep your franchise mode as realistic as possible, and I'll be going over those in this video. One thing to note before we get started is that I have a second video on the channel dedicated to my realistic slider set and it's best to use these settings and sliders in tandem so be sure to check out that video which I'll link at the end of this one. A number of the settings that you want to adjust can be found in the league settings area of the menu so once you've loaded in your franchise save scroll across to options go to franchise settings and then into league settings. The first thing you want to do here is make sure you're playing on All Madden difficulty. All Madden can be frustrating at times, hence its nickname All Maddening, but if you're using my slider set, many of the issues will either be greatly reduced or completely resolved. It is possible to play on All Pro, but the CPU simply doesn't present enough of a challenge in most games. They rarely stretch the field, constantly check down, and they give up far too many chunk plays on defense. So if you want close, back and forth, realistic games, all Madden is the way to go. The next thing you want to do is make sure that your game style is set to simulation. If you have it set to either arcade or to competitive, then you're going to have no injuries, no fatigue, um, barely any penalties called, things like that. Simulation, as you can see on the right hand side, is the authentic NFL style that plays true to player and team ratings. You get penalties, you get injuries, you get fatigue, and it's designed to reflect real life. The next thing to do is to adjust quarter length and you can set this to 15 minutes. This is obviously the length of quarters in real life football. Um, so we want to try and replicate that in the game if we can. Now, most people have this set to maybe 10, 11 minutes, something like that. Um, and that's obviously far shorter than the length of a, a real football game. And most people do this to accurately replicate the number of plays that might be run in a real football game however they'll then get into the game and snap the ball with something like 15 maybe even 20 seconds left on the play clock which you never see real quarterbacks do in real life quarterbacks rarely snap the ball with more than four or five seconds on the play clock unless of course they are trying to score very quickly and they are running some kind of hurry up offense most of the time the ball is snapped with four three maybe even two or even one second left on the play clock so what you want to do is set the quarter length to 15 minutes and then set the minimum play clock time to 12. so this is more realistic for two reasons firstly it does give you the actual number of minutes that are played in an nfl game a full game will be 60 minutes long in game but then it also allows you to snap the ball with a realistic amount of time left on the play clock as well so what will happen is you will line up at the line of scrimmage with 12 seconds remaining on the play clock any adjustments that you want to make will obviously take some time off that any motions that might be involved in the play and then you'll routinely be snapping the ball with five four three seconds left on the play clock 12 seconds is the perfect balance as well to ensure that you still end up with a number of plays at the end of the game that replicates the number of plays that you would um, typically see in a real game of football. So roughly 120 to 130 plays in total. I do also like to set myself limits in terms of offensive play calls. So I tend to set cooldown to five. That means if you want to run the same play out of the same formation, you will need to run five other plays before you can do that. And then the play call limit, I tend to set to three. That means in a single game, you can only run the same play from the same formation three times total. This can help to just prevent you from spamming the same plays over and over again, but it does give you a bit of flexibility to run the same plays. If they are successful, you can come back to a, a play that you ran in the first quarter later in the game, for example. I don't set any limits for defensive play calls because you are far more limited in terms of the coverages that you can run and the formations that you have available and you do see teams in real life running the same coverages out of the same kind of alignments over and over again in a in a given game the last thing i recommend doing here is turning dynamic momentum and home field advantage off it's a nice feature in theory but in practice it just has far too much of an impact on the game if you have full momentum it's too easy to completely um, blow out the cpu if the cpu has full momentum it's far too difficult to get back into the game so turn this off you'll get more realistic games 
Another area that you'll find here are team settings. All of these I just set to manual. So things like weekly training, trades and free agency, scouting college players, set all of these to manual and you can just turn these off. Auto progress players, that will give you the chance to um, upgrade your players as you see fit. Same with these talents and then tutorial pop-ups, unless you want them on, just turn those off. There are one or two changes that you want to make in the commissioner settings as well. And the first is to move trade difficulty over to very easy. Now, this seems counterintuitive because trading in the NFL obviously isn't very easy. It's very hard. So you might think it makes sense to set the trade difficulty to very hard. However, all that does is give EA, give Madden, the most control over the trades that you are able to make. And actually, we want it to be the opposite. We want to have the most control over the trades that we are and are not able to make. Madden's trade logic is notoriously flawed. The packages that teams send you are completely unrealistic. So by setting this to very easy, what it enables you to do is get the widest possible range of trades available to you. And then you manually with self-discipline can pick and choose the ones that are most realistic. So essentially what you're doing here is removing the restrictions that the game places on you and placing those restrictions on yourself because you have a better idea of what would be a realistic trade and what wouldn't and you can impose that restriction on yourself. I do like to set the free agent motivation impact to high as well just to make those personal interests of players a little bit more impactful. One other thing you want to do here is turn practice squad stealing to off and again this might seem counterintuitive since in real life teams can steal players from an opposing team's practice squad However, in real life, that happens fairly infrequently, whereas in Madden, it happens all the time. I even have a theory that teams will wait for you to sign a player to your practice squad before they then steal them rather than sign them out of free agency in the first place. I see it all the time. There'll be a, a player sitting in free agency that is um, accessible, is available to the CPU teams, and they will remain in free agency. CPU teams won't sign them. However, as soon as you put them on your practice squad, you will then in the following week get a notification that they've been stolen. So to prevent that from happening and to actually be able to have a practice squad of 10 players that you do want to try and develop and potentially be on your roster next season, turn this to off. You should disable the relocation settings just to prevent any um, weird and funky CPU teams from cropping up in the future. And then the last thing I do here is to move the staff talent cost modifier over to slower. So this will just slow down the uh, pace with which you can accrue staff points and it will just give you a, a bit more of an in-depth kind of longer term team building process. There is an argument for turning progressive fatigue off just to prevent um, players from leaving the game for too long, especially late in the season. But I do think it's realistic to leave this on so that your players carry over their fatigue from week to week. This forces you to manage their reps um, a little bit more stringently, a little bit more strictly in games. It does force you to manage their practice reps as well. Maybe you want to set them, um, you know, to a, a much easier, a much less taxing um, training and, and practice program. And you can also adjust the amount of fatigue that carries over from week to week with the actual fatigue slider as well, which is something else that we go over in the sliders video. Everything in dev trait management, I just tend to leave as default the number of X Factor players, superstar players, star dev players, as it is out of the box seems fairly well balanced to me so i just tend to leave all of those things as default and then the last thing that i do here is just turn fill roster to off so that would just prevent the cpu from automatically signing free agents and i can fill the bottom of the roster slots out myself the next area of the menus that you want to go to is back to the options and franchise settings but you want to go down to xp sliders so these are the sliders that adjust basically how quickly players gain XP. The more you move the slider to the right, the faster they will gain XP and the faster that they will develop. The more that you move the sliders to the left, the slower that they'll gain XP and the longer it will take them to develop and, you know, move up in terms of overall. For some positions, you do need to give them a slight bump so that they progress a little bit quicker. But for the vast majority of positions, you're either going to be leaving this default or even dialing it back slightly to slow down ever so slightly how quickly they progress. I actually use Mr. Hurricane's XP sliders, so I'll put a link to his video breaking down the thought process that goes into each of these sliders in the description, and you can go and watch that. But for the purposes of this video, I'll just go through each of the slider values. So you want quarterback set to 60, halfbacks can remain at 100, Tight ends at 64, the same for wide receivers, 
Fullbacks, you want to bump to 120. And then you can leave tackles, guards, and centers all at default. The same for defensive ends, defensive tackles, middle linebackers, outside linebackers, all can remain at 100. Cornerbacks, you want to bring back to 84, along with three safeties and strong safeties. And then kickers and punters can also remain default. The next set of sliders that you see will determine how quickly a player will progress according to their age rather than their position. So again, you can check out that Mr. Hurricane video if you want a, an in-depth description of why these sliders are where they are. But just for the purposes of this video, you're going to want to set players to 120 if they are 20, 21, 22, 23 or 24 years of age. 25 should be 110, 26 can be 100 and then you want to progressively go down through the late 20s to early 30s 90 80 70 down to 50 40 30 if you're 32 or 33 and then down to 20 for 34 and 35 year olds you then also get a corresponding set of sliders for how quickly a player will regress so how quickly they'll get worse depending on their position and then again on their age so this time you want quarterbacks at 140 running backs at 180 110 for tight ends 170 for wide receivers 110 for fullbacks, 130 for tackles, guards, and centers. Also for defensive ends and defensive tackles. The same for middle linebackers and outside linebackers. And then 140 for all your defensive backs. 100, again, just default for kickers and punters. In terms of age regression, this one starts at 26. And everybody can remain default until you get to 33 years old. And you want to give them a, uh, a slight bump to 110. The same for 34. And then 35 plus year olds will be at 120. There are a couple more settings that you will want to change and again you want to navigate to a different menu for this so again you want options but this time you want to scroll down not to franchise settings but to user settings. Here you want to go into the game options so the first setting that you're presented with here is the coin toss and you want to set this to receive. This is another option that's going to seem counterintuitive at first because the best option is to kick you want the ball after the halftime break and that's what you see in real life football almost always if a team wins the toss they will defer to the second half they'll kick to the other team in the first half however for some reason the cpu team is set to always receive so if you set this to kick you will be receiving the ball in the second half no matter who wins the coin toss if you win the toss you'll be kicking to the cpu team since that's the option that you chose However, if the CPU win the coin toss, they elect to receive. So you'll still be kicking to them at the beginning of the game, even if they win the toss. So what ends up happening is you kick to the CPU team in the first half 100% of the time, which obviously isn't realistic. So if you do want variation in terms of who kicks and who receives at the beginning of the game, what you need to do is set to receive. So then whoever wins the coin toss will elect to receive and then you'll get a bit of variation in terms of who gets the ball at the beginning of the first and who gets the ball at the beginning of the second half. The other thing that I would recommend doing in these settings is changing the passing type to classic. This is ultimately personal preference. You can absolutely set it to placement and power, placement and accuracy. Those are options that you can utilize if you wish. However, I like to use classic just because that relies most heavily on the ratings of the quarterback that you are using. If you set it to placement and power or placement and accuracy, then your stick skills do come into play a little bit more heavily. And you can very much make up for a bad quarterback in terms of your own skill in the game. Whereas leaving it to classic does mean that you're relying far more on the ratings of the quarterback to get the ball where it needs to be. And you're a bit more limited in terms of um, how much you can improve the play of a bad quarterback. So as I said, ultimately, personal preference. If you want to utilize your stick skills a little bit more, then feel free to change this. But I think classic is the most realistic option. All of these gameplay helpers I tend to turn on as well. These just help to smooth out um, certain elements of wonkiness that might come into play um, if you turn these off. Things like getting out of position when the ball is in the air or completely whiffing on a tackle because the angle of the camera was slightly off or your player was bumped off of his um, pursuit angle slightly by um, an opposing player. Turning these on just helps to smooth those kinds of things out and again ensure um, things remain a bit more realistic. The final thing you want to do to try and get your franchise save a little bit more realistic is 
increase the frequency that players come in and out of the game and you can do that via the auto subs so these can be found in the main menu but within your franchise save you can find them in the manage staff option and then scroll down to auto subs so what these sliders do is change how frequently players will be substituted in and out during the game now some positions obviously you don't want to substitute at any point during the game quarterback being the obvious option um, but then also your offensive line you generally want your strongest five offensive linemen in throughout the entire game you don't want to be rotating them however running backs come in and out of the game all the time so do wide receivers tight ends that sort of thing so these sliders should encourage um, a, a few more substitutions during the game your starting running back will come out for a couple of plays your backup running back will come in and uh, relieve the load a little bit for for your starter now these sliders are notoriously temperamental they are difficult to actually get the game to implement these and actually carry out the substitutions in the game but if you're going to see results on the field these are the sliders that you should use to see them these sliders do also pair again with the fatigue slider which I will touch on in the slider video itself. So quarterback should be set to zero and one. So zero substitute out, one substitute in. Running back should be 96 and 100. Wide receivers should be 89 and 90. Fullbacks and tight ends should be 79 and 80. And then offensive line, zero and one. You scroll across to the defensive side as well. The same applies. You want defensive tackles set to 88 and 91. Defensive ends set to 88 and 90 linebackers 85 and 86 cornerbacks 84 and 85 and then safety set to 85 and 86 so there you have it all the settings that you need to change in order to get your franchise save as realistic as possible as i said these should be paired with the slider set that i go over in the other video so make sure you go and check that out as well i'll link it at the end of this video and if you do want to see these settings and sliders in action, make sure you check out my Colts 2019 franchise that I have running on the channel at the moment. But that'll do it for this one. Hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.